Well, welcome to the Ankeny Church of Christ with our opportunity to come together to worship uh, our Father. We know it's been a blessed week and there's uh, even been challenges. We know we have many who are traveling right now, but uh, we truly do feel blessed, not only as a, a nation, as a congregation, but even individually. We can look at our lives and, and reflect on how he has blessed us. And as a congregation, we know as we come together, we want to be reminded of of what our mission is. And our mission is we want to continue to grow to become like Christ. He's endowed us with his spirit to allow us to accomplish that. And it's our prayer that every day we become more in step with where he would have us to be. And as far as our vision is we're, we're looking for, we want to continue to become that family that loves God, has the desire to serve others, both in and outside of the body, but also wants to encourage those that are seeking him, to become disciples of him, who will also make disciples for him. Today is going to be a little different when it comes to the, how we're going to conduct our service because we're blessed in so many avenues and aspects. But today is one uh, of challenge for some because we uh, have been blessed for so long to know the Botings. And today we're going to give honor to them and also to Olivia. We know that typically there will be an outdooring. Uh, oh, happy fourth, by the way. Forgot that slide. So excited about what we're about to do that I just, whoa, you know, happy fourth. Uh, we'll get to more of that. So we're we're going to have opportunity to celebrate Olivia. And I know uh, so many of you guys don't get, you haven't had the, the blessing of, of being able to know her. Uh, but here is a, a couple pictures from her uh, a little over our last year of her life. Um, and obviously Charlize loves her little sister. So there is some uh, love the ducky costume cute. I like that. She got Chanel for her first Christmas. Wow. Nice. So we're going to invite the uh, the Botings and our elders to come on up to the front, and we're probably going to uh, get, they'll have you guys gather behind the table here. Uh, and at this time, we're going to have our, our, our baby dedication service where we have opportunity to pray over the family uh, at this time. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day, a, a, a day of uh, re, re, uh, uh, coming together and, and being your family. We thank you that the Botangs are with us today. We thank you that Charles and Francisca have been here for a time and we've seen their family grow. And we thank you for their girls. And, and today, Father, we pray especially for Olivia. We know that she's special to you as we all are. We know that she is so young and so impressionable. But we know that Charles and Francisca will encourage her along the way. Encourage her to love you and to know you and give her life to you. And we just pray that you would help them. In, in any way and help us to help them as well, to help raise their children to be the kind of children that you would have them to be. And, and in time, Father, that they would learn to be disciples and, and bring others to you as well. We thank you for listening, Father. We thank you for blessing us the way that you do. And we pray that we could be a blessing to you as well. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Lord, we continue our prayer with the request that you would put the spirit down on this family and help this family to grow 
in their faith and in their strength and surround this, these children, this child with Christian people who will become her family and, and teach her to grow to be a fine Christian lady. And continue, Lord, to bless them as you bless them with these children. We ask this in Jesus' name. Father, <clears throat> we pray that you would bless Olivia with, with your spirit, that she would grow not only in stature, but also in wisdom of you and of Christ and of, of the, your word, that uh, your spirit would guide her and help her with her understanding, that uh, she would become a spiritual person and, and eventually she would learn uh, your will for her, that she would want to become a disciple, and that she would want to to go on to influence others to become disciples of Christ. And, and Father, I pray that you would be with uh, Francisca and Charles and Charlize, that their influence on Olivia would be a, a great example and, and a great spiritual example. Father, we pray that uh, their extended family would be an influence on her, uh, all of her friends and family, but many who are not going to be living near them, but others who will make friends and will become part of their family. Father, I pray especially that uh, she would have strength, not only physical strength, but, but uh, spiritual strength, that she would be able to withstand uh, the arrows that Satan will throw at her throughout her life, that she'll be able to catch them and break them and, and, uh, and show others what it means to, to be a follower of Christ. Father, I need all these things we pray through Jesus. And Father, we ask you to bless Olivia and keep her and protect her, Father, and may you look at her with love and with kindness, and Father, may your face shine upon her. And Father, we ask you to be gracious to Olivia and that you will show her all of your favor throughout her life as she learns to love you with all of her heart and with all of her soul and with all of her strength. And that's our prayer for Olivia. And we pray it in Christ's name and the congregation says, amen. And we uh, would like to read the Bible to Olivia. And uh, because you're leaving, we have some uh, memories written down in this book. We will mention it. Thank Let's please stand as we sing these next few songs. My country, tis of the sweet land of liberty, of the I see. Land where my fathers died, lift up the pilgrim's pride from every mountainside, let freedom ring. My native country, the land of the noble free, thy name I love. I love thy rocks and rivers, thy woods and temple hills. My heart with rapture thrills like that. Let rocks their silence 
break the sound roll on. Our Father's God to the author of liberty to the we sing. Long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us by thy might, great God our King. And at this time, children, it's time for your children to push down there. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trembling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the fatal lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, your Bibles, go ahead and turn over to Galatians. Galatians, the fifth chapter. So happy Fourth of July. Very blessed to be able to come together. And I know that we do have many traveling. It's a time where people do go and they celebrate our freedom together often as a family. And we're blessed to, to live in the nation that we do. And we know that even in that, there are so many other challenges. A nation that was purposed to say, you know what, we want to be able to live free, to make those choices, to pursue life, liberty, and also happiness. And as such, we come together today as, as Americans to say, you know what, we recognize that even on July 2nd, 1776, a group of men got together and they said, you know what, we are done. But this tyrannical rule from the British, two days later, the Constitution was drafted. So we proclaim this July 4th as the day where we declare we were no longer going to be under British rule. Now, we recognize that that was the beginning, the continuation of a battle that ensued with the British for some time. And many men and women and even children lost their lives in the pursuit of this freedom. 
And this is one of those weekends where we can't move the, the day to say we want to have an extended weekend, so let's move the holiday to a Monday, recognizing that this is a very special day in the history of our nation. Part of the Constitution says we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. Thus endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights, and among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Those words indicated by the men who drafted that we're not going back, we are only going forward. Now, as Christians, we understand that we also have been given so many additional freedoms. And we're blessed to have the freedoms that we do as a nation, but so much more so the freedoms that we enjoy in Christ. The blessings that we have saying, you know what, we're not going to go back. We're not going to continue to live under the tyrannical rule of sin, Satan, and our own lust. But we want to be free from those things. So we make this decision to say, you know what, I want to obey the gospel. And for some, they don't have a full understanding of what that means to obey the gospel. You can turn over to Romans, the sixth chapter, or 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, and you would look in those passages, and they indicate that just as Christ came, and he died, and he was buried, and he rose, he says, that's what I want you to do. I want you to die to yourself and to sin, to be buried in baptism, and you too will rise a new sinless creature. That is not only what the gospel is, but it says how to obey it, and that's exactly how we do. But it's not just, a, a, I want to be baptized. But it's about a continual obedience, to be washed clean, understanding just what his blood, his sacrifice means for us. We understand as disciples, we are called to follow after our Lord and Savior. I mean, he's trying to not only know what he's wanting us to do, but get in step with him. And sometimes we don't do that. We can get out of step, can we? He says, if you want to be a disciple of mine, I need you to follow after me. And in so doing, we recognize we're not going to stay the same anymore. Because if we're following in the steps of our Lord, we see he does and he did and, and does things so much differently than what the world around us does. So we have to change. And that's one of the steps in becoming a disciple is not only following and, and knowing what he wants you to do and doing it, but allowing it to change you from the inside out. If you recognize, hey, I've got this sin in my life and I'm struggling with it. It's not that you blow over it and you keep going, but you change and you allow the spirit to help you overcome that sin in your life as you replace the things of the world with the things of God. And as you do that, people are going to recognize there's something different, and they're going to begin to ask you. And that's where we get into another part of what it is to be a disciple, and that is to fulfill his mission. He's given every single one of us his mission. As we go through our lives, we're supposed to share that good news, his death and his burial and resurrection, and what they mean for us now and for our eternity with as many people as possible. That's why that is in our mission. Our mission says that we want to encourage anybody who is seeking to become a disciple of his, not only to do so, but to learn how to help others become disciples as well. So we come to Galatians, the fifth chapter, our reading this morning, looking at verses 13 to 16. I'll be reading New American, I think. Well, I'll go ahead and read the uh, English standard. Uh, you, my brothers and sisters, you are called to be free, but don't use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. It says, if you bite and you devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. And I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. As believers, we talked about this even in the adult class this morning. In 1 John 5, it mentions that we have this blessing, that we don't have to worry about our eternity. Because we have come to a place where we believe in the name of the Lord Jesus. Because we can have that confidence in our salvation. 
Now, a believer is not one that simply believes. I believe that it was mentioned that even in James the second chapter, even the demons believe, and they 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 tremble. They are afraid of the name of Christ. They recognize the power in His name. But it's not about just belief only. It is about acting, as we talked about, on that belief. If you're wondering what that looks like, go through the book of James. I appreciate Rick's class that he went through not too long ago, and I know so many of you do, and, and, and any class that you've been through that talks about the book of James to excel, that we're not just supposed to be Christians in word only, but it's going to be made evident in how we're living and the things we do and the things that we don't do. And that's only going to be able to, to be possible in our lives if we allow the Spirit to act and interact with us. And that's what the last verse is talking about. He says, I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. So often we talk about the struggle that we have with sin, and it's not something that just goes away because we act in obedience to the gospel, and we continue to act in obedience to that gospel. There is a continual struggle. There is a continual battle that rages on. The things that we don't want to do are the things that we do, and the things that we we do are the things that we oftentimes don't want to do, Paul says. But it's about a continual allowance of the Spirit to work and, and reign in our lives. And that's not going to happen just by coming on a Sunday morning. And I think we recognize that. And that's why the encouragement to be involved in classes and ladies' classes and, and small groups and just in each other's lives, calling and encouraging each other all the more because that's exactly what we need. Not to be idle, not to sit on our hands, but to help each other through this life. i got to be honest, when I heard that the Charles and, and Francesca were leaving, I was kind of like, oh, I felt deflated. Because to be honest, I, have all, I love listening to Charles talk. I love his accent. I've always wanted to attempt to preach a sermon. Now, some people are like, I might get lost in his accent. I would be mesmerized because I can listen to this guy talk for hours. And I, I was like, oh, no. But I know that even in the, the, the challenge of moving, not that I'm anti-California, but even moving to a state where I know that uh, Christianity is, is often challenged to its utmost, I know that he will be a beacon. His whole family will be a beacon of light to that community. And I, I know that we're gonna, we, we love them and we're going to miss them wholeheartedly, but I know that, that God works in ways that we don't always understand. And the encouragement that the whole family has been to, to me, the encouragement that every single one of you, so often when we can get down and we can feel overwhelmed and those things that otherwise would just cause us to go back and, and live according to the pattern of the world, he says, that's why we need each other, to be encouraged. When we don't come to church, we don't attend those extra activities, we don't get into his word, his spirit is not going to be living in us as it would if we allow those opportunities. Are we making the most of them? I'm way off script today. I don't even know why I brought this paper up here. Galatians 5, 13, 14. I'll get back on task. We are called to, to be there for each other. That's part of why we put that in our, our mission statement. Uh, rather, the, the idea of our um, the what we as a congregation want to accomplish. That we people know us because we love God. We're sold out and, and we want to do any and everything he ask of us, but that we also want to serve others and do, do so with a purpose, not just to serve to serve, but to serve to help them come to see Christ through who we are and what we have to say. Verse 13, we have been called to live in freedom. But we're not called to live in freedom so that we can say, you know what, hey, Christ has set me free. I've overcome sin and death. Now I can do whatever I want. No, we know, God forbid, that we continue to live in sin any longer once we've been set free from it. We are here to serve one another in love. And I, he says, that's you want to sum up the whole law, it is to love other folks as you love yourself. Now there might be times where we get down, we just get discouraged, we even get so frustrated with ourselves we don't feel that love for ourselves but nine times out of ten we're doing things that are going to benefit us that are going to bring us pleasure happiness satisfaction and the like in our lives it says do that for others and you're going to find that you are going to be blessed beyond measure it says don't don't just use the stuff the freedom that i'm giving you to keep living sinfully it says love one another i think that the english translation here really misses out 
on what the original language was trying to say. It literally reads, you are called to freedom. So use your freedom to become slaves to each other in love. Slavery is the opposite of freedom. So why would Paul use such language that so often in our minds has such a negative connotation? Why would he do that? Because he understood what it meant to be a slave to one another. That is this notion that it is not about me. I want to do whatever will benefit you. But the notion that we have to, the thing that we have to pick up on here, he says, I want you to be a slave to one another. The problem is when we start thinking about, well, if I'm a slave to somebody else, that means that they can take advantage of me and they're going to run me over and, and, and I'm going to feel like a doormat. But if we are slaves to one another, that means if I'm doing something to help you out and to benefit you, then you're going to reciprocate. If I know that somebody needs their their living room painted right now, which you're doing a great job, I love the Facebook pictures. <laughs> say, hey, can I come over and help? Or if you have a water heater, you need whatever it is to say, you know, but it's not just that, but it's a spiritual. Yeah, there's so many physical ways that we can help each other out. Yeah, you can come over and mow my yard if you want. I'm okay with that. Actually, my kids do that, so I don't even do that anymore. But if there's something going on, I'm okay with that, but you have to understand that there is a spiritual aspect. If I only am focused on mowing your yard or painting your house, when it comes to work camp, that's how we kind of initially get our foot in the door, if you will. But it has to go beyond that. How can I help you spiritually? What's going on in your life that we can invest in each other? And that means time. I think this notion, uh, this, this concept, if you will, of being a slave... It, it, it costs us. Because so much of what we do, if you think about your average day, when you're watching TV or you're on the internet or you're doing X, Y, or Z, so much of that is, is for you. Now, you might watch a TV show with your, your kids or with your spouse or with whoever. It says, look, I want us to do this thing and to love each other and become slaves to one another in love. So get past the sin and allow the spirit to begin to reign in your life and you're going to find that your your schedule is going to take a change. Now I know we can be so very busy. I know come September our already busy lives are going to take off because what happens in September? School and if you have kids in school and they're in activities, that might be band, it might be choir, it might be football, it might be cross country, and on and on that list can go. And suddenly you're thinking, oh, man, I was able to kick back. For others, it might be, man, winter's coming up, so I've got to get X, Y, or Z done to the house before or I have to do all these things. It comes back to our priorities. If you were to go to... Philippians, the second chapter. Paul says that we should use our freedom to choose Christ, to act as if we were in, so invested and involved in one another that it was demonstrated in how we live. In Philippians, the second chapter, looking at the first 11 verses. Therefore, if there is any encouragement with being united with Christ, any comfort in his love, any common sharing in the spirit, any tenderness, any compassion, then make my joy complete. Be like-minded, having the same love, the same spirit, and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. Not looking out for your own interests, but each one of you the interests of others. And in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset that Jesus Christ had who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness. And being found in the appearance of man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place, gave him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Paul again points us back to this 
place where he wants us to love and respect one another in such a way that we value one another and will do whatever it takes to help the other out. Thing is, so often we can be hurting, and, and if we're not investing in one another, we will never know that. If we don't have any depth in our relationships, we can be superficial, and we can stand at that back and say, hey, how you doing? Good, glad to see it, and you walk out the door. All the while, you might be in the depths of the greatest depression that you have ever felt in your life. You might be struggling in so many ways. You might recognize that there is sin that has overtaken me, that I know what I'm supposed to do. I was raised that way, and now I'm going off in a way that is contrary to where God would have me to be. And I want somebody to help me out. But you walk out that door saying everything's okay. Part of humility is saying, you know what, I am not all that. And some Cheez-Its. I like Cheez-Its. So I'm not all that and Cheez-Its. I don't have it all together, and sometimes I need some help. And humility means I have to recognize that God put the kingdom here to help me out. So I don't have to go through it alone. Let's go back to Galatians. Galatians 5 and the last verse, verse 16. I say, if you walk by the Spirit, you won't gratify the desires of the flesh. If we walk and live by the Spirit, we will not do what our flesh desires. And again, I think that this is one of those times where there's English missed a little bit of what the, the Greek was trying to say. It literally says, but I say, keep on walking in the spirit and you won't fulfill the desires of the flesh. There is an imperative here. You have to keep walking in the spirit. You got to keep in line with what God would have you to do. And if you keep doing that, you're going to find that as you place the things of God in your heart, in your, in your mind, as you're about to do those things, the great thing that God has blessed us with as we grow to become like his son, as we grow to be like Christ, he's endowed us with the gift. When we obey the gospel, he says, here is my spirit that I am giving you. It's one of the spiritual blessings that we get, that he endows us with. And as such, now we can go out and we can rely on that spirit in those times we're about to participate in the things of the flesh, to be reminded, I know this is not the will of God. And you can recall even book, chapter, and verse. And if you can't do that, at least you can recall the scripture that you've placed in your heart and mind. Say, I'm not going to do this today. And we'll continue to walk in the Spirit rather than to gratify the desires of the flesh. And that comes with growth. And it doesn't happen instantly. And that's where the investment in one another, the investment in our time together in God's Word is necessary. And essential and imperative. Now I referenced a verse and I want to go there. We're going to go back to Romans 6. And this isn't up there. Sorry, Jack. I didn't, but I just like I'm winging it now. So Romans 6. I think it ties in well to what we're talking about. What shall we say? Should we continue in sin that grace may abound? I'm a Christian. I can do whatever I want. I've got my Christian card that gives me carte blanche to do whatever in the world I want. See, the problem that we see in the church of Galatia, the problem we see in the church of Rome, the problem we see not just in the early church, but even in the church today, is people had a misunderstanding. They had a misunderstanding of God and his grace and this good and perfect gift and the freedoms that we had. Some people took it to one extreme and said, well, now that we're free, we, we've got to come up with all these rules to follow in order to continue in our freedom. And the other side of the coin said, well, you're, you're free. You can do whatever you want now. Paul said, no, you guys are overshooting it on both sides. Part of what we're supposed to do is to recognize that we are free from the law of sin and death. But now we're free for living, the freedom for living for him. We can do so many more things now because of what he's done. And he says, should we keep sinning so that we can just live however we want? He said, God forbid, may it never be. How can you who died to sin live in it? Or don't you know that as many of us has been baptized into Christ have been baptized into his death? This is that gospel. Therefore, as we've been buried with him through baptism into death, 
that in order that Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too can walk in that newness of life. For if we've been united with him in the likeness of his death, we'll also be in his resurrection, knowing that our old man, our old self, was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we are no longer slaves to sin. For he who died is freed from sin. We understand that Jesus died on the cross, one of the most horrific deaths that you can, you or I can even imagine. There are ways that we probably do not want to die. There are ways that we would dread if we had to die that way. But the cross in the, the first century, you did not want to die that miserable death. And what Christ went through even went beyond what the typical person would go through on the cross. But he went through it, and he died, and he bled. And then he was taken and he was buried. But he didn't stay there. He rose from the grave. And he says, that's what, as far as this gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, that I want you to obey. That's what I need you to not only act in obedience to, but to stand in and share that with others to help others to become disciples. That means ones who will follow him, be changed by him, and fulfill his mission. Some, I know, have obeyed the gospel, but sometimes we don't always stay in it. Scary statistic, and you know I've shared it more than once, and it has been around since I was a teenager, and I've seen it come true time and again in my life. Ten people who would graduate high school. How many stay faithful? What did I say? Anyway, Two. Two of ten. So 80% typically will fall away in any graduating class of ten. That's a scary statistic. And I think that even more so is as so many of our state institutions propel our kids to a place where they are placed almost in front of teachers who say that God is neither real nor, and they begin to buy into it, so many more even walk away. So in a time where so many of our young people and so many of our adults are walking away, it's so much more essential that we stand firm, not only in the gospel, but that gospel truth, that he loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us so that we can overcome sin and death, so that we can truly be free. There are Christians throughout the world today that do not get to enjoy the freedoms that we have as a nation today. But they have freedom in Christ, just like everyone here. Because when they act in obedience to the gospel, he says, look, I have forgiven every sin that was ever behind you. And now we have a future ahead of us. And you will be with me for all eternity. But I pray that we don't take advantage of what he's doing. We take advantage of that grace and just live however we want, thinking that if well, I came to church, I checked my box. We don't see it as a list of rules when we become legalistic. We also don't live and say, you know what, I know that this is a sin, but I just, I enjoy it too much. And I know he'll forgive me one of these days when I get around to demonstrating that I am truly repentant. I pray that we become people who live in the Spirit. And in so doing, because we're, we're doing what he's asking, we're involved in his word, we're sharing with others, it is just flowing out of everything that we do that we will see that we are a blessed, blessed people. Sometimes we need help with that. Maybe you've never obeyed the gospel, and you're not quite 100% sure still what that means. Or maybe you have obeyed the gospel, but you're not living according to God's standard. You've fallen back. And just for you, Caleb, as a dog goes back to its vomit, they say that's my favorite verse because I use that one a lot. That's a gross thing, thinking a dog goes back. But sometimes that's what we do with our life. We go back to living the old ways not where he wants to leave us. He wants us to be redeemed. If you need some help, we're going to sing a song because we're going to go home with him one day. We are all going to fly away. If you want some help, uh, we want to encourage you in your spirit. Why don't you come down to the front as we sing this song to encourage you in your spirit. If you need to obey the gospel or you need some help, come down to the front as we sing. Let's stand as we sing the song, please. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away.
now time to pick your children up from children. I have uh, two folks coming up, and we're going to uh, get a little bit more information on that here in a moment from Justine. But uh, at this time, I'm going to ask uh, Jackson to come up front here for a second. He's a proud of this man. He has made a decision. He says, you know what, I want to win stuff. I know that he and his family have been studying, and uh, he says, you know what, I want to make the, the change in my life and to live in accordance to that. So. I'm going to take your initial confession. I know your dad's got a little bit more to add to that, but do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? All right. With that initial confession, we're going to go ahead and let you go back, and your dad, you guys can go get ready. And then here in a moment, uh, we're going to have Royce come up, and he'll offer a prayer on Justine's behalf and also uh, on Jackson. Well, there, there are times in our lives where things happen, more than one thing, multiple things. Have you ever had that and just get to that point in your life where you just don't know if you can wake up? And you want to share it, but you hate to be the, the downer in people's lives. Justine comes in and says that she regrets not sharing the things that she's going through right now. With Kurt's mom dying, Kurt's cancer, uh, her head injury, and now she's been diagnosed as having Parkinson's disease. And so all these things, as you can imagine, have, are weighing on her spirit in a way, but also she just wants to let it out. And so she comes before us today, letting it out. And uh, God says that we are to present our petitions to him and to pray without ceasing. And so she asks for our prayers on her behalf. Father, we are humble. We're humble to come before you as your child, as your child, your son, your daughter. It's a position that you've bestowed upon us because we believe in Jesus Christ and in his salvation work. Father, in that position, we come asking you to bless. Justine, even in the midst of her trials, we come before you asking that we can be a part of her journey as she struggles through this period of, uh, of health and, um, and some sadness, Father, and loss. And we ask you, Father, that you would lift her up so that she can experience your peace, which is beyond understanding, which is beyond circumstance, which is beyond everything that we would know in this life. In fact, it's miraculous. And so that's the thing that we ask on her behalf. Father, we also come before you asking for you to bless Jackson in his decision to become Christian, to see him uh, become truly your son, to be able to call you truly his father. He's just amazing. And uh, we ask Father to protect him as he comes along this road, jumps on that train which leads to heaven, to you, and to life eternal, and to glory in heaven. And we ask you, Father, to make it a journey that is memorable, that is a testimony, that is truly a blessing to the world around him. All these things we ask in Christ. Ten thousand angels, which is number three forty nine hymns. They bound the hands of Jesus in the garden where he prayed. 
They led him through the streets in shame. They spat upon the Savior, so pure and free from sin. They said, crucify him, he's to blame. He could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the confession. So do you believe that Jesus is God's appointed king for us as, as promised in the scriptures? Do you believe that Jesus died for our sins and he rose from the dead? At this time, do you commit your life to following Jesus no matter what the cost or how hard it gets? All right, Jackson, at this time, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for the forgiveness of your sins, so that you may receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and be added to history. He paid a debt he did not owe, I owed a debt I could not pay, I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a new song, amazing grace. Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. He paid that debt.
guess this is one of the, oh, not on, hold on. One of the favorite things that uh, I enjoy uh, that we do put the, the Lord's Supper toward the end of service so that as those who choose to obey the gospel will be able to partake. And I know that, uh, you know, we're not, uh, there's not the stipulation of who can, but we know that for those who are in Christ, Lord's Supper has a very special place. It means that we understand what the, the shedding of his blood means. And here in Jackson, going to be able to partake of that for the first time. And I know that uh, as he's changing and getting ready, we'll have opportunity to, to hug on him and I uh, congratulate him for this major life decision. But uh, the particular Lord's Supper for every one of us uh, on a weekly basis is a reminder because we forget. If you're anything like me, you know, I forget stuff so quickly. You can tell me your name the first time I met you, and I would just have to apologize because you know it's coming. What was your name again? Because I forget. It's very easy to forget. But so much more so that we can live our lives and we forget what Christ has done. So. For, for those that are young and new in Christ, that the, the remembrance is fresh for them because this means something. And that's why we do it every week, so that we don't forget. And I know that uh, Myron's going to lead us in the opportunity here in just a moment to uh, to have our minds focused on what the sacrifice means. Um, but I pray that we don't forget. So that, uh, as we go through our days, through our week, that we can demonstrate our love for him and what his sacrifice means. But, uh, you know, to sum it up, there was, there's five, uh, five of the, five of the 10 virgins were prepared. They were prepared for the long haul. They were, they were, uh, they all, all had intentions to uh, meet the master, but only five did because they were prepared. Uh, the last verse is, 25 says, be on the alert then, for you do not know the day nor the hour. And, and what's that got to do with the Lord's Supper? Um, everything. Uh, let me read one more verse. And we've heard this uh, many, many times. First Corinthians, First Corinthians 11. Uh, 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This morning's class, the Sunday school class was so good. Rob used it in his sermon. I'm going to use it now because Richard talked about proclaiming, proclaiming our salvation. And that's what we do when we take the Lord's Supper. We proclaim uh, we announce it, we present it. We are not ashamed of it. We are confident. We, uh, we are proud to be Christian. That's what it is. So, uh, as we come together every week from here on out, we need to think about if we're ready, we need to be ready. And we need to be ready for the supper at the table, too. Uh, that means self-analysis. Think about this every day. Am I proclaiming the salvation, our salvation, my salvation? We need to think about that every day. So let, please join me with, in the prayer to give thanks. Father, Thank you so much that we can bring our prayers to you at any time, any place. Father, at this time we give thanks that you give, you gave us your son's body. You remind us of the terrific death that he went through, the pain and suffering. And to remind us in the breaking of that bread that we're about to partake of. Thank you for sharing this memorial with us to help us, to, to help us remind us. Father, we also give thanks for the, 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 the cup.
that reminds us of Christ's blood, his life-giving blood that was shed. Father, thank you so much that you love us and give us your time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming this morning. Uh, truly blessed to uh, be able to come together to worship God and to partake in all the extras that we had today. Uh, let's close our time with a, a word of prayer before we have our announcements. Okay. Father God, I thank you for your grace, for your mercy, for your love that you pour out on us past and our present that we know continues to come in our future and for all eternity. Father, we thank you for the, the perfect gift of your son, the freedom that we have in him. And God, we know that there's so many people desperate for it, and we pray that we can be your light. We can be the disciples you're calling us to be, to continue to allow you to change us as we strive to follow after you, but to really fulfill that mission that you put every single one of us on in our life, and that is to, to share that good news with others while we still call today, to encourage each other. We know that there's some in our midst who are, are struggling, and we, we pray for Justine, and we pray that amidst all the challenges that are going on, on in her life, and they seem to come in waves, that you will re relent in some of that and allow her a respite and the, the opportunity, God, to, to see the love that the family has for her. But uh, we pray that you will intervene and help her beyond what any one of us could do. But same, allow us to be your hands and feet now. God, we thank you for the decision on Jackson's part to obey the gospel and to say, you know what, I believe Jesus is Lord of my life and I commit to him for all of mine. God, we know that that is not a commitment we enter into lightly, so we pray that we will be able to encourage him throughout the whole of his life to stay faithful and true to you. God, we thank you for the time that you're allowing and the days ahead. We pray we make the most of them for you. We pray these things in your son. Amen. Uh, before we close, we do have a few announcements I'd like to go over. Um, the blessing box, we do have a couple needs uh, so that we can continue to fill that for our community. And those uh, four products for July are going to be feminine products, toothbrushes, like the little, like travel size toothpaste, and uh, plastic bags, grocery bags. I know you guys have Walmart bags or Hy-Vee bags or you have them in abundance, right? You're like, what do I do with these? Some of you take them back to the store. Some of you are like, just throw them away. We'll bring them here. Not like every single one you own because we don't need quite that many, but if you have Walmart bags, bring those. We need those for the blessing box outside. School supply, that is next weekend, 17th. So it's popping up pretty fast. So uh, two weeks away uh, on Saturday, and that's going to be at the Dollar General. We still need volunteers to help uh, the day of. Uh, so see Doris on that. I know the youth group uh, TNT is tomorrow night, and we're going to be meeting at the Sanders, 4.30 to 7.30. We're going to be putting those bags together. So uh, if you're thinking, I can help out with that, and you want to come in, is that next week? Oh, it's not this. Oh, it's not. This, okay, sorry. I'm ahead of myself. Oh, I'm already in vacation mode. I'm sorry. I'm going on vacation starting tomorrow, so my mind's already. So not this, not the Sanders. So it will be the, who is it? Not this week, is the Sanders. Who's next week? We'll start out here at the building, and then we're going to go somewhere. Get in touch with Carson. He's in charge of it. I'm clueless. 
great part about having an intern is I can be like, I don't know, fuck the intern. Uh, and, <laughs> uh, what else do we have? Next meeting crest opportunity is Sunday, July 25th, and that's going to be at 1 p.m. So uh, we want to be able to get together, continue to encourage those who maybe haven't had as much encouragement over the last year and a half. We know for some of them, they're just kind of, it's so easy just to feel isolated and alone, be able to go into their facility and uh, to communicate with them. If you have any questions about that, you can also see Doris. There were some changes. Uh, I don't think unless you're uh, over 16 or have been vaccinated, they're still uh, not letting you in. So plan accordingly for that. Any other announcements, things that I missed? Okay, then we're going to get to birthdays. And we've got four birthdays this week. Uh, Emily, Jeff, Dennis, and Patrick O. So we'll sing happy birthday to all four of them. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, all four of you. 